As long as you are coming here, it must be obvious that your search is not over. Why is it so? Because there is a you that continues to search. As long as the doer is present, the ego is present. Only when you drop all forms, become disidentified with all forms, and get connected with the formless, will you be able to comprehend that you are existence without identification? Wu Xin expounds a thousand different sentences and ten thousand different words. They are appropriate for all kinds of human beings with different sorts of confusion. One will come to discern that self-centeredness is a prison. The end result of such discernment is clarity, which gives one nothing and takes away everything. The feeling, I am, is not personal. It is the declaration from conscious existence of its conscious existence. That which supports and animates the body of each is one. Its name is I. When one hears the words I, me, and my, let there be no confusion. It is the voice of the authentic I, the sole actor and the sole possessor. It is the experiencing factor in every experience. No person's body is the centre of the world, yet the world seems to be experienced from such a referential centre. The body is only a physical instrument. When the world is experienced subjectively, it is not known by the body, but via the body. When one takes one stand as an object, one is constrained by birth and death. When one stance is as subjectivity, one enjoys no such constraints. As such, when one understands that one is the subject to every object, one transcends birth and death.
To know an object is knowing. Even without an object, knowing remains. As such, one should understand that even though things come and go, the nature of knowing neither comes nor goes. Mind, divided into subject and object, creates a conceptual universe of images. It is extended in space and time, and intermittent, coming and going. This is the world of living and dying, as seeming entities. Peace is a state not of the individual mind, but of a mind freed of individuality. Consciousness is not an activity of the mind. Instead, it is the light which illuminates the mind's activities. However, one is only conscious in the relative sense. Absolutely, there cannot be any thing to be conscious of any other thing. Wu Xin declares that the body in the world does not exist apart from the mind. The mind does not exist apart from consciousness. And consciousness does not exist apart from the absolute. Everything that one knows are appearances. Appearances in the consciousness that one is. In the clarity that is always there. The world does not exist as anything outside. Every state seems real while one is in it. Appearance is mere seeming, seeming self and other, seeming world, seeming bound and limited. Yet, it is unstable in that it comes and goes. Inside and outside, only pertain to that which has location in space. That which is everywhere is both inside and outside, yet beyond the two.
One's body does not choose the phenomena that have arisen before its senses. One's mind does not choose the current perception, thought or feeling that arises in one's mental expanse. All that the psychosomatic instrument can do is to react from the conditioning it carries. Simply do not allow the subtlety of pure subjectivity to be masked by the involvement with the instrument of the subjectivity. Abide in Wu Sin's words only. Build your home there. Construct your bed there. In this abidance, all that is required will be provided. Clarity cannot be attained nor forced. It can only happen when it is given the opportunity to do so, when obstruction by concepts ceases. It can appear only when it is given a vacant space to appear in. Nothing has absolute existence. All existence is relative, relative to the mind. Yet, there is a permanent in the impermanent, and this is eternally as it is. Yet, it is unknown. Although it is ever clear and ever existing, it is not visible and is not recognized. One often tries to anticipate what it would be like to reach a final and total understanding. In doing so, one overlooks the fact that mind is both part of and appearing in this universe and is therefore not qualified to comprehend it. Any finding is as likely to come from searching as it is from relinquishing all searching.
Polishing one side of a coin does not facilitate the seeing of the other side. The coin must be turned. Likewise, the outward-leaning mind must be turned inward. There, it is not provided any ground on which to land, nothing onto which it can affix itself. In the beginning, nothing comes. In the middle, nothing stays. At the end, nothing goes. The phenomena of light and dark alternate with each other. Despite all movement, the conscious life energy remains unchanged. It is unalloyed being. And it emits no stages. This body is one infinitesimal piece of the content of consciousness. It is used by consciousness as its instrument to know the totality of the content. In this way, the seer and the seen are both parts of the seeing. One can say one is not the body. One can also say that one is not limited to the body, but instead is all things. Usin's words cannot survive passing through the filter of one's concepts. One must be receptive. Receptivity means having no prior standard by which to evaluate what is heard. Anything is possible here because this is the abode of that which makes all things possible. Understand that Wu Sin's teaching is only an expression of his own experience and realization. He declares that those unwilling to exchange their individuality for immortality should not linger here.